Out of the box, we know that arrays come with a whole lot of capabilities that make working with data easy and sometimes even a little bit more fun. Now, it doesn't matter how much you get out of the box, there'll always be times when you might want a little bit extra. Either you might want something more, or your team might want something more, or the application has requirements where some of the built-in data types, including the array, might not have everything you'd want, so you want to extend it, you want to build on top of it, you want to make it do more than what it was really designed to do. And that's where this really fun topic of extending arrays really comes into the picture. And so we're going to look at, in this video, two ways in which we can extend our array with some really cool new capabilities. The first approach is by extending the prototype, and the second approach is by looking at subclassing. Both these approaches are kind of cool. They have their pros and cons, and we'll walk through what each of them bring to the table and some of the things for you to kind of look out for. So let's start with the top. Let's start with extending the prototype. Now, this whole phrase sounds a little scary, and if you aren't familiar with JavaScript to the point where all these words are just like, make like really good sense, don't worry about it. It's essentially a fancy way of saying that when JavaScript was first created, it is by default designed to be inheritable. You have a basic object, and then each object, like your strings, your arrays, your function, your numbers, all these things kind of extend from that base object with more and more capabilities. It's almost like one of those, you know, Matryoshka doll kind of things where something more complex is hidden behind something that's slightly less complex. And the, the magic that makes this all happen is a prototype object. And what we're talking about in this approach is we are extending things by taking advantage of what prototype brings to the table and extending it by adding more things to that prototype property. Now, I have a separate video and an article that goes into much more detail about this. And I have a link for that at the bottom of the video. But I'm not going to go into too much more detail on how prototype extensibility really works, the main thing to just kind of know is that when you extend an object by modifying its prototype, any new object you create will automatically get that extension as well. And also any existing object that you might have already created on the page will also now have access to what this prototype does. And so here's an example. We have a swap method. Now, believe it or not, there is no swap capability in the array that we get out of the box that's built in by JavaScript. And so the way we would create a swap method that and, you know, makes all of our arrays have this capability is by using array.prototype.swap. So I'm targeting the array object, I'm targeting the prototype property, and I'm adding or defining in this case a new method called swap, and just writing the logic for being able to swap two items based on the index position. And the way you use it is I have a variable or an array called my data. It has the letters A through G. And then I call swap on it and I pass two arguments, the index positions two and five. And the end result is that what used to be at C and what used to be at F are not swapped. So now you get A, B, F, D, E, C, G. The swap method is not the interesting part. How this code works, that's an interesting thing. The part to kind of keep in mind, the part to focus on is how the swap method is actually used. Notice that I have an array called my data and I'm just calling swap directly on it. There's no fancy frills. There's nothing that kind of indicates this swap method was something that we defined ourselves, especially if you ignore this whole block right here, which could be part of a, a common utilities library that code might be using. This looks like it's a default built-in method. That's pretty convenient, right? Almost like it came out of the, you know, the default functionality that arrays have out of the box. And so the reason behind this is that if we were to visualize the prototype chain and how our arrays work, you have my data, and you have all the values, like the letters that go from A to G inside of it. And if we draw the line from how my data, the array, gets defined and how it you know functions, it is an extension of the array that prototype. And the swap method, which we added earlier, is just something that lives as a part of it. And so what this means is that I'm using my data, I can call the swap method directly, it goes to the prototype and says, hey, where's swap? Swap is right here. A swap available. And this means that any new array I create as well will now swap also provided. So here's an array called cool people, where it has three values, Bono, Yoshi, Batman. And even this array, even if I'm not using the swap method directly, it has access to it because I extended its prototype, I extended essentially its own, like, you know, part of the chain that goes from where it is right now to the most basic object that it was many, many, you know, cycles earlier. And so this is the part that you have to be a little careful about is that whenever you extend a built-in object by extending the prototype, it is very likely that one day you might find that array.prototype when it comes out of the box by default has a swap method defined on it. And when that happens, it's often tricky to know like is the behavior that you define 
the one that is correct or is the one that is built by the browser the one that is correct and of course the correct answer is always what the browser provides is the one you should optimize for and then you make your modification on top of that but your code might break and so a little bit of things to kind of keep in mind in terms of code maintenance and and just like you know long-term sustainability that you need to kind of keep in mind if you want to extend an array or extend an object by doing that one simple solution is don't call it swap call it something unique like in my case i might call it krupa swap you know there's a very good chance that no browser ever will have a method called krupa swap and so I don't have to worry about name collisions or anything like that. So a unique name is one way to work around it. But the other approach, the approach that is more modern, that came out in the last few years as a, a viable alternative to extending an object besides modifying the prototype, is something known as subclassing. Now, the way subclassing works is that instead of adding to the prototype, we create a duplicate array-like object that extends our default array. And this sounds like, a, like it sounds like again sounds a bit like you know science fiction, but the way this works is as follows: We have we, we define use a class syntax. We create the new array that we want to create. In this case, I'm creating awesome array, and I'm using the extends keyword and saying I want to extend array. So I don't want to create something brand new. I want to take all the capabilities that array has by default, and I just want to extend it with my own special kind of things that I want to add on to it. In which in our case is a swap method just like before. And so this class awesome array extends the array and the only real value it adds on top of that is a swap method where it does the swap logic to take a value between two index positions and swap them between each other. And the way you would use it, you can kind of see here where I have a new variable called my data and I'm saying new awesome array. And then as part of the array constructor, I pass in the default values that I want and then I swap the values pretty easily. Now, notice that the way I'm defining the array though is not by using the bracket syntax, I'm actually using new awesome array. And that is one of the gotchas to kind of keep in mind. When you subclass the array and you create your own custom array type, you know, there are many reasons for this, but you can't use the bracket syntax and say, I just want to use, you know, bracket value that is going to be a part of the array. And the reason is that this bracket syntax is pretty much hard coded the default array object. We don't want the default array. We want awesome array because the awesome array is what has our swap method. And the other detail to keep in mind is that when you use it this way, you have to pass in new awesome array and then the values are passed in as part of the of as part of the constructor function where the values kind of go in. So you might not do ever do new array, you just use a bracket syntax, but in this case, because we're extending it, you're using new awesome array. So just keep that in mind as a part of it. And the last detail that is really interesting to keep in mind also is that when you are subclassing an array, all the arrays that get returned from that subclassed array are the subclassed array itself. Now, that probably does not make a whole lot of sense, so let me walk through an example here. When you have an array, you have things like map, filter, and reduce that return a new array af after they fully completed running, or at least map and filter, definitely. The reduce can if you, do, you, know, if you tweak it correctly. And so what happens though is that if you're calling map or filter on awesome array, what gets returned is an awesome array itself. So you're not going to get an, a default array as a result of it. So here you can see an example where we have our awesome array. I'm creating a new array called new data and it works off of awesome array where we're calling map on it and just saying make take each letter and make it uppercase. And so if you were to log the value of the new data array, you get capital A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, which is kind of what you want. And if you check the constructor and the, the type of that particular array, notice that it's not array, it's awesome array. So just a little detail to keep in mind if you're ever worried that by doing this, you have to keep going back and forth between array and then the more specific types you might have created or extended from as a result of it. So there you have it. Two brand new approaches, well, not brand new approaches, two existing approaches you have for extending an object in JavaScript. And in this case, we kind of tweaked it a bit to look at how would you extend an array in particular and some of the ways we can use both the, the prototype extension approach and the, the more modern subclassing approach. And we kind of the pros and cons that each bring to the table. If you had to ask me like which approach I would take, I would, you know, I still kind of like the prototype inheritance approach, mostly because I just work with an array. I don't have to do with the a new version of an array, I don't have to deal with awesome array, for example, it's just array, I have my property that I want to set on it or method I want to set on it, and it just works. So just make sure to name it in its own more unique version so your browser will not one day clobber over it with its own version of it. But if 
for whatever reason you like the class-based approach as well, it's JavaScript, it's code, there's no right or wrong answer, only weak preferences in my case. So choose whatever works for you, whatever makes you happy. So with that, if you have any questions about arrays or anything web development related, post at formatgroup.com where I and others would be very really happy to help you out, answer your questions and bring all your web development dreams come true. And also, if you like this video, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that come up, make my subscriber count go up, which is always a good thing. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter to be notified of bytes updates on things that I do. And lastly, if you like videos, you might also like the same content in paperback and Kindle editions in a book form. So check out my book at Amazon, link in video below. And with that, I will see you all next time.